Hello, white people. Race and sex bias in medicine. How medicine discriminates against non-who white people and women. The truth hurts. All right, so we're looking at oxygen saturations. The left hand is sort of whitish, and it's setting at 94% with a heart rate of 73, which is not realistic. And then the person on the right has a black hand, and uh, their pulse oximeter says finger out. So... The only time that it's going to say it's not going to register a reading is if your finger's not in there right or if you have a dark nail polish on there and it just can't read your oxygen saturation. This is an article dated April 8th, 2021. At the peak of the Rona epidemic in America, hospitals needed to triage patients. All right, so every single hospital triages patients. This is not a new phenomenon. Only the sickest were admitted. All right, so in Detroit... The hospitals that I know of, because I talked to doc a doctor who worked there, and told me that um, the only people they were allowing to be admitted were people who were critical and people who uh, shown showed symptoms of the Rona, because everybody was hysterical. They were turning away people with chest pain, heart problems, uh, stroke. Uh, broken bones. They believe it or not. This is this is just you know, it's unbel. I expect Detroit hospitals to be sued out of uh, existence after this nonsense. But they were given referrals to go see. Um, so they were given a referral. So basically, they had to go home, call up the you know like the orthopedist um, or uh, you know the cardiologist or whatever, set an appointment and go see them about a broken bone or a heart attack, or anything like that, because they were not seeing anybody unless they were critical or had signs of the Rona. And then also when I was in a grocery store, I was in an Aldi in Michigan, in a little town just north of Detroit, and I wasn't going to wear a face diaper. No way on earth was I going to wear a face diaper. So everywhere I went in this little town in Michigan, I did not wear a face diaper. A lot of people were wearing face diapers, but I wasn't going to wear one. Anyway, so I'm at the checkout line in Aldi, and I don't have a face diaper on. I'm naked face, and this lady with a diaper on her face, she takes it off. and She goes, oh, I hate this thing. And then she proceeds to tell me about how her neighbor died of a heart attack because he was too afraid to go to the hospital, and that her daughter broke her ankle, and they took her to the emergency room, and then they were sent away. So I had... Um, you know, like one person told me, you know, you one story and then you have a somebody to back it up, so, total stranger. So that's what's going on in Detroit. Or what I don't even know if it's still going on. I highly doubt it. One measure used to determine the severity of an individual's illness was his blood oxygen level. Okay, so a blood oxygen level is no different than a blood pressure, a temperature, you know, measuring somebody's heart rate, their respiratory rate. This devi the devices typically employed to do this, known as pulse oximeters, are easy to use. They clip on a finger like a clothes peg. Okay, so in America we don't say clothes peg, we say clothes pin. Regrettably, they record some darker skin patients as being healthier than they really are. I call horseshit. This may have resulted in people who needed hospital treatment being denied it. Unbelievable. Work published last year in the New England Journal of Medicine, which looked at more than 10,000 patients throughout America, suggested the pulse oximeters used overestimated blood oxygen saturation more frequently in black people than who white. A health well, what about the women and the other colors of people? A healthy human being has an oxygen saturation of 92 to 96 percent. No, this is not true. A healthy person has an oxygen saturation of 98 to 100 percent. 100%. <laughs> if you're at 92 to 96% and you go to an emergency room and you say, I'm having difficulty breathing, they're going to run further tests to see why your oxygen saturation is low. In this work, some patients who registered that level, according to a pulse oximetry, had a true saturation as recorded by the arterial blood gas measure, a method which requires actual drawing of blood of less than 88%. Okay, so an uh, arterial blood gas or an ABG is drawn from an artery. It's not drawn from, you know, like your wrist or your forearm or anything like that. It's drawn from an artery. And that's not real common. They're not going to draw your blood from there and measure your ABG just randomly. Okay, not, nothing. Everything costs money and nobody's going to randomly do anything like that. You could potentially bleed to death from an ABG draw. 
All right. So that's not done real common. And so this, they're saying that, uh, that a person whose oxygen saturation level with the, uh, the, um, the doodad that goes using the pulse oximeter goes on your finger was reading 92 to 96%. But by the time they got their ABG done and that ran through the lab and came back, it was 88%. Okay. So crashing people, their ABGs are going, their ABG, what am I saying? Their, uh, their oxygen saturation is going to drop people who are crashing. <laughs> whatever you know their the respiratory problems are gonna so this person who wrote this article didn't know what they were talking about and they need to pull this article because it is a big fat hairy lie for black participants this happened 12 percent of the time okay so if people were satting at 92 to 96 and they were told they were fine and they were told to go home why would an abg be done why would an arterial blood gas, blood gas draw be done? It wouldn't be done. So they're saying for black participants, this happened 12% of the time, three times the rate at which it occurred for who white participants. These statistics probably are dependent upon the number of bodies that showed up. So say, for example, 12% uh, of all patients that came through with respiratory issues were black people then and they all had you know like similar they similarly needed uh they similarly came in you know with an oxygen saturation of 92 to 96 and then later um and because their respiratory status was declining they needed an abg <sighs> these just this bunch of lies anyway let's see as michael sajolding Shijolding of the university of michigan the study's leader observes this difference would also be the difference between being admitted to the hospital and being sent home okay you're if you were sick enough to get an abg they're not just gonna randomly send you home it just ain't gonna happen <laughs> The, and, and, you know, and then the, at the beginning of the article up here where it says race and sex bias, how medicine discriminates against non who white people and women. OK, it doesn't even talk about women here. This whole article doesn't even talk about women. Just disgusting. These people are disgusting. Just a bunch of troublemakers. All right, white people, that's the damage for now. Thank you so much for listening. I look forward to your thoughts below.